First mistake I wanna help you avoid is just making sure you're wiring your outlet correctly. Now you'll see we have gold screw terminals, silver screw terminals, and then one green screw terminal. So when we're dealing with a standard piece of Romex, this one specifically is a 12-2, and that means it's 12 gauge and two conductors. First conductor being black hot, second conductor being white neutral. With this Romex, we'd be matching up our black hot conductor to the gold screw terminal side of the outlet. Conversely, for the silver terminal side, we would be matching that up with our white neutral. Also to note, the larger slot in your outlet is always gonna be associated to the side with the silver terminals, that is your neutral slot. And then finally for the green ground, we're gonna associate that with Romex to the bare ground but if you have conduit or another setup, you might have green insulation for your wire, and then that's gonna match right up to your green screw terminal. Now, second mistake I wanna help you avoid is just making sure we actually secure these wires correctly. On the thumbnail for this video, they actually did some of these issues on that outlet that equaled a failure. So if you're dealing with a residential grade outlet, you will find these holes in the back. That is for speed wiring or what a lot of professionals call backstabbing, which I just don't recommend to any DIYer. Sure, it saves you a little time, but to make sure we avoid any failures, side wiring is gonna be the method you wanna go with, which I'll demo the proper technique right now. So you wanna strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation from both your conductors. Then I'll use the jaws of my hybrid wire strippers here by Kinepix to make a perfect J-hook. If you have standard wire strippers, you probably have a hole right in the handle that can help you with a J-hook. And if it's a little open like that, just crimp it down with your wire strippers to close off the opening. We'll do the same thing here for our bare ground with the jaws making our J-hook. And then we'll start off in the order of operation that is ideal, which is the ground first. This is something I haven't done in the past. And when it comes to the screwdrivers, a flathead like this is gonna give you a lot of torque, but it's gonna slip off. A Phillips is gonna keep you on that screw, but it's gonna strip out the screw or cam out. A better solution is either a hybrid like this, which is a Milwaukee ECX number one, or if you wanna go with a multi-bit tool like this 11-in-1 by Klein Tools, you'll see a link in the description that's gonna give you nut drivers, a bunch of different bits, and specifically a number one Robertson which if you know any Canadians, they love the Robertson, and for good reason. They're super handy when it comes to this type of wiring because it fits right into the screw and it always stays on and gives you plenty of torque. So highly recommend getting one of those. Make sure you're going in the clockwise direction, starting off with your ground, that is best practice and something I haven't done for many years, so I'm trying to get better at. And then you'll tighten that down on your bare ground, making sure it's cinched tight to the screw terminal and does not push back out. We'll do the same thing here for our neutral on our silver screw terminal. Again, keeping it down and making sure it pulls tight to the screw terminal. And then you'll finish off with your hot side and the black conductor in the clockwise direction with your number one Robertson, tightening that down so this is what I would wanna see. I wanna make sure there's no insulation below the screw terminal that would separate the screw terminal from the actual copper. And also I don't wanna have the insulation stripped far enough back where I have exposed copper past the housing. And then additionally, I would just go ahead and tighten down any of those unused screw terminals just as best practice. Again, keeping everything as close to the housing as possible where it's not sticking out past the housing. Now mistake number three actually relates to residential grade. These are cheap. I do not recommend using residential grade. If you're gonna spend the time to go down to the home improvement shop, get supplies, swap out some outlets or install new ones for the first time, I think you should upgrade to a much better option. So usually for about two or three more dollars, we could upgrade from this residential lowest end outlet and step up to a commercial grade, which is pretty much superior in every way. It's just a much better build. I have cut many of these open and the internal components are also superior. It gives you a thicker housing. The contacts on the inside are going to hold up to frequent plugging and unplugging much better than the residential grade. If you've ever been in a coffee shop, a hotel or even at your house it's a little older when the plugs start falling out of your outlet you know it's super annoying so the commercial grade is going to hold up much better 
And specifically, this is gonna give you an option to go in the back, which is called back wiring. Not speed wiring or back stabbing, but back wiring. If I push that screw terminal in for the hot side, you can see there's a little plate that pushes out of the way. And then I could go directly in with a properly stripped wire right in the back and this is not in the correct order, I should do my ground neutral first, but then I could tighten that up and that screw terminal is gonna pull that plate against that wire and then it pinches that wire into place making full contact with our copper wire. And now we have no exposed copper past the housing. It's a faster way to wire and it's also gonna give you a more consistent result especially when maybe you don't have that much experience making your J hooks and wiring a standard residential grade outlet. Now, even with a commercial grade, you don't totally get off the hook with the ground. The ground does not have the back wiring feature. So you'd still need to make your J hook and put that in the clockwise direction. Again, this should be your first wire to go on. Tighten that down, then put your neutral in place and then your hot to get a fully wired outlet. Now I have taken apart Legrand, Eaton, Leviton, Hubble, and this one specifically, the Legrand is my favorite. Again, check below the video, you'll see a link for this exact outlet that we're using. So now you know where the wires should go, how to securely attach them, and what is the best type of product to use, which I do believe is the commercial grade outlet. But when you go to install the outlet, mistake number four or five can kind of trip you up. So let me point you in the right direction. Mistake number four is when the outlet is recessed into the wall. Maybe you have an overcut in your drywall or you're just not getting the outlet to be flush with your drywall. So I'll walk you through some easy fixes and make sure you're code compliant with this video right here. And then number five is a common instance where, hey, there might not be just one set of wires. You might have two or three sets of wires that you need to deal with and appropriately wire that in. So check out this video down here and that will also introduce you to a better option than a wire nut, which is called a Wago 221 lever nut that I've been using for years and highly recommend to any DIYer. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.